Um, so it's not often, well, actually, I was going to say it's not often that Digital Foundry sort of enters the main news cycle, but, well, it kind of is, isn't it? Um, but this one in particular caught my eye because in our DF Direct special on the PlayStation 5 Pro specs, where we were talking about the relatively meagre increase in CPU speed offered by the, uh, the enhanced mode uh, available in the new hardware. And uh, we made the statement that it's kind of like unlikely that you're going to be playing GT a6 at 60 frames per second on this thing um, and that's kind of built on the assumption that the base PlayStation 5 version won't be running at 60 frames per second either um, and it's important to make that distinction I think because well let's just say on the off chance that you know there is an unlocked frame rate mode on uh, the PlayStation 5 version of GTA 6 and it's almost at 60 frames per second well then obviously that extra 10% of CPU performance will help, right? But ultimately, you know, we haven't seen a, G a new GTA game for like two generations now. And typically Rockstar console games of that style target 30 frames per second that they go for maximum simulation. So I think it's worth just clarifying there that this is uh, what we were sort of meaning by that. If there is a 60 FPS mode, for the PlayStation 5 version of GTA 6, obviously there will be a pro version that runs at 60 FPS and probably has a more tighter lock at that frame rate, just to be clear there. But, you know, obviously we've only seen one trailer of GTA 6, which ran at 30 frames per second. We don't know what the full game is going to be doing. It's, it's fairly self-evident at this point. It's just based on precedent. Uh, that, you know, typically Rockstar go heavy on simulation and fidelity. And that means that they want more time to render those scenes. And that means 30 frames per second. But with that said, there has been a lot of discussion recently about CPU limitations on current console games. And we kind of alluded to it in the PlayStation 5 Pro Direct by mentioning a game alongside Baldur's Gate 3 that does have CPU issues. And that game is Dragon's Dogma 2. <laughs> which, yeah, I mean, it's an interesting example because based on what I've seen of Oliver's video and where we do appear to be CPU limited, the Pro would probably be doing a much better job at maintaining 30 frames per second if it had a frame rate cap. Well, <laughs> I, I mean, you say that, but I'm going to just disagree. Really? Uh, oh. Really, the reason why it is, because I want everyone to stop saying the word frame rate. I want to stop saying frame rate. I want to say frame times. Frame times are way more important. And the average frame rate, if you look at a comparable PC with the Ryzen 5 3600, it is literally, I do my benchmark, it says average of 30 FPS. And it's like, yeah, wow, that right. must be so good. And it's not, it's awful. <laughs> it's so bad. It, it, even 30 FPS, trying to lock 30 FPS on a Ryzen 7 7800X3D would also not be good because the frame times spike up to like 50 milliseconds if you turn the camera. And it's doing that on console too. The only thing that's masking it from a from a from our perspective is just the existence of VSync. Right. Um, mm. VSync is just gonna tell that frame to go out at fifty or sixty six milliseconds or whatever, uh, and it'll it'll look like a larger bout of drops, but you can't really differentiate it between other drops that are much more subtle in terms of frame time. So I would say a pro wouldn't do anything of reasonable because like as i was saying in the video you could get the equivalent of a pro upgrade on pc by just turning off rt but it doesn't help the frame time situation really in a meaningful way uh, you're just like slightly increasing the average fps uh which makes the bouts of frame time drops actually like more intrusive on your eyes because you see like a higher a lower base frame time and then all of a sudden 75 milliseconds uh, so it just looks it just looks bad i i want to i want to say like this is an interesting time where i don't want to say like dragon's dogma 2 is like the next gen thing that everyone of course it should be 30 fps i don't want to say that at all because there's like some obvious super hardcore not great optimizations they did like the NPCs on PC and console disappear like right in front of your eyes constantly. Yeah. Uh, and it's really awkward looking, I would say. And I think that was probably their last minute ultra hardcore bandage to try and do something um, along with some other things they probably did. But like here, I don't, I don't know what to say about it right now other than this is the way the game runs. 
And at least on a Ryzen 5 3600, it actually looks like it's running and tapping this CPU. Like, it's different on a larger CPU right now, but like, oh my God, I can only imagine that the console CPUs actually have probably really intense utilization while this is going on. Uh, it would be interesting to actually look at the system output for wattage when it gets to the town versus the countryside. I'd be curious <laughs> to see if it's decidedly higher because of that. Uh, you could probably test it best on Xbox Series X where you have flat uh, frequencies. Maybe that's something to do. Yeah. Well, to be fair, um, power utilization does vary on the on the PS5 as well, according to load. So you'd probably see that. Uh, mm-hmm. as well but yeah i get what you're saying you've got fixed clocks uh that's kind of one of the, the big mysteries of the playstation 5 from our perspective because we don't have access to those internal metrics you don't know what the clocks are doing and how impactful the power limit is uh, one thing which did crop up in the ps5 pro disclosures to developers was that the actual drop to cpu clock they described it as very very infrequent on the base machine um, but I'm assuming it still happens, right? <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, I think the point, you know, going back to GTA 6 is that, you know, uh, when those leaks first happened, you know, there was this notion that Sony had brought forward or, or was, had even produced this machine in this time frame to get the best GTA 6 experience, which isn't isn't really true because it takes like four years to make yeah. a console. <laughs> it's not like Rockstar went to Sony and said, hey, four years from now, got this game coming out. Maybe you should produce a console for it. That's not, not really the way it works. But, you know, one can imagine that on the GPU side, it will have um, a lot of benefits over the... Um, over the the base PlayStation 5 version of the game, assuming Rockstar wants to go down that route, right? And we Uh actually saw with like um, Xbox One X version of uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 that, you know, they are interested in pushing the enhanced consoles uh, if the horsepower is there. And that was a pretty spectacular experience. But in terms of this 30-60 divide, you know, 10% of CPU clock isn't going to make a huge difference there. It just helps with overall stability if you're CPU limited. That's pretty obvious, but a lot of the messaging seems to get kind of lost sometimes uh, when people sort of um, snip you uh, from a hour-long video. <laughs> and actually, this sort of leads us on to this question from uh, supporter, DF Enjoyer. Uh, Hi, mm. DF team. Hope you're doing well. Uh, Rich, I saw your uh, GTA 6 not running at 60 FPS on PS5 has been used by some big publications such as IGN and console fanboy accounts on X. How do you feel about this? And are you guys ever concerned about saying things that will be taken out of context or used as ammunition in the battlefield <laughs> of console wars and other wars? <laughs> what other wars? Oh, oh God! Yeah, yeah. I, hope my, not. I shudder to think. Um, I'll go over to you about, uh, on this one, John. But I think, from my personal perspective, ultimately, you know, anybody can be quoted out of context, and it's a bit annoying when you see the troll accounts, and we all know who they are on X, sort of producing these snippets. But you know, ultimately, you know, these guys just sort of live and die on that sort of engagement and people kind of realize who they are and why they're doing it at some point. Um, Any thoughts on this one, John? Well, I have to say I'm not especially fond of that, but it is true that our stuff is often used out of context. Uh, And I do feel like a lot of times it is picked up by people that perhaps don't, they either miss the point or don't don't really get what's being said and they kind of take a thing and throw it out there without that context or understanding uh, and take the wrong conclusion from it. And that is obviously going to be frustrating when that happens. Uh, But I think that's just, that's what happens with anything where you're talking about a situation. There's going to be people that do that for any, anything beyond just games or other wars, uh, as he says, Uh, (laughs) that, that does happen a lot. I obviously, I think we try to be very careful about that, especially in the scripted videos. It's quite possible to do that and like dance around it. But when you're doing like shows like this and everything's just kind of happening as, as you sit here, uh, it's a little, sometimes you put your foot in your mouth. I'm, I'm pretty good at that. I have to say. Uh, but even when you don't put your foot in the mouth, stuff, stuff does get taken out of context. I think. And what you said, I think about GTA six makes perfect sense. Uh, but when you blow it up in a headline like that, it does sound 
different, if you will. <laughs> yes. It was basically but, at the tail end of a discussion about the whole CPU and the exactly. implications for games. And the implications for games is that, you know, you are going to be seeing um, very different and improved um, graphical presentations from PS5 Pro by virtue of the fact it's got a much bigger GPU and machine learning based upscaling. Those are two really good things, right? But when your CPU is just 10% faster, you're not going to be seeing huge benefits to um, you know games that are CPU limited. It's, it's like obvious. But the key point is that, you know, GTA, 5, GTA 6, rather, assuming it's a 30 FPS game, like all of its predecessors, let's be fair, uh, in the console space, um, yeah, it's not going to have a huge amount of difference other than possibly improving stability on the frame rate target. Right. That's, that's that. Any thoughts I on think this, that- Alex? Oh. Oh, uh, uh, I don't like being off quoted. Uh, usually happens all actually happens all the time. <laughs> uh, I feel like just because I get annoying Twitter DMs, sorry, X DMs, or just random threads on Twitter that I get linked, and then I just X. start mass whatever. I'm just gonna call it Twitter <laughs> till I die. Uh, I'm gonna and then I start mass muting every single person in that list. You know, because I know that anyone who's engaging with it is just toxic as hell. So, yeah. You actually keep linking me. I can increase my mute list. <laughs> uh, final thoughts, John? Oh, I mean, less about that and more just about... Uh, I actually asked some dev friends of mine just what they thought about the CPU stuff. And most of them were actually like, oh, they don't feel that the CPUs and the consoles are that big of an issue. Uh, compared to last gen, like obviously things could be better, but like if you do things smart, uh, it's not nearly as much as like getting uh, juice from a stone or blood from a stone, I guess would right. be the more accurate thing. There's last gen Jaguar CPUs were atrociously underpowered and it took a lot of effort, I think, to utilize them. Here, yeah. I think there's enough the cpus are capable enough where depending on how you manage it it shouldn't it should be less of an issue and i think that actually bears out in the results and that the overwhelming majority of games on consoles this generation are 60 frames per second or at least right. targeting it and it's much 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 higher than last gen uh, it is where, but last right? gen we didn't have cross gen yeah, yeah we, we just we did well it was like painfully like it wasn't anything like this like we, no, it we wasn't got this, it we wasn't got games same. that still targeted one one Xbox One until like this year right no so. I know I, but we still it was it was not that dissimilar there was still PS3 360 stuff like coming out in 2015 2016 like Destiny was on those consoles you know Metal Gear Solid Five was on those consoles there was a bunch of games uh, that yeah. worked that way it was it was not uncommon to have cross gen. Uh, all the Far Cry stuff up until five was cross gen. Uh, they were all about that for a while. Yeah, I don't. But I don't know it, it because clear like it wasn't the same level of proliferation across the board. No, it's not. It's not quite the same. Yeah. But I still think overall things have turned out fairly well uh, in terms of that. And the biggest problem I've seen is a lot of the new non cross gen games especially unreal engine ones they seem to be both cpu and gpu bound we're seeing gigantic drops to resolution which is very unfortunate so that's an area where the ps5 pro could help a lot just image quality in those games yeah. um but you know yeah the- i mean fundamentally though you know a console is a fixed platform with a finite level of uh, of ability right of capabilities right and when you're dealing with an audience that mostly has 60 hertz screens and i still think that is the case yeah um then your basic targets are 60 frames per second or 30 frames per second it's been or that 20. way <laughs> or 20 <laughs> Really well, green of time. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> There's not really too many games, thankfully, that are targeting 20. No. Um, we kind of left that be- behind in the N64 era, I think. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, but yes, yeah, so basically, you know, to get a, a consistent experience, the choice is 60 or 30. And, you know, it's uh, from a developer perspective, it's the um, choice between 16.7 or 33.3 milliseconds of compute time per frame. And um, you can do a hell of a lot more with 33.3. It's that simple. And, uh, you know, that's kind of why I suspect we'll be seeing GTA 6 more likely targeting six, uh, 30, rather. 
Yeah. yeah. I think they're I think that's just their track record as well, like you said. Yeah. That series is not known for pushing high frame rates until later re releases, basically. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I think that they're most interested in pushing out the visual fidelity. But again, like you said, we don't actually know. I mean, it's entirely possible that they have a 60 FPS mode in mind. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Like we, we genuinely do not know. Can't know that. I, I mean, just to go, go back to the cross gen point through the one thing I want to say is like, kind of like with the, the GPUs in these consoles, like where you can, uh, you can use that. We have a cross gen base in terms of graphical quality and maybe simulation complexity. And you can use that to up the image quality and frame rate, or you can use that to, massively increase the asset quality, lighting quality, simulation quality, but then you have to compromise in some other aspect of that, whether it be frame rate or resolution and that like triangle of frame rate, like resolution or like quality. And I think the games that go beyond cross gen and actually start targeting things that are different and were not attainable last time around, that's when we start seeing the the compromises to any one of these three things in the triangle and for gameplay stuff orientated stuff i think 30 fps is still going to be things that developers target on these like ps5 and xbox series x and yeah. in that mm-hmm. case a playstation 5 pro like this marvel game 1943 like seriously look at that um <laughs> uh it's just cutscenes, but like i don't think that is a 60 fps game I just look at it. They showed it off at 30. I mean, so, like, why they do that? Why would they show a game off at 30 FPS if it's going to launch with a 60 FPS mode? Like, wh- like wh- why? Why? Well, Sony did Why not just... It. Yeah, I mean, just BS it. Say, do a 60 FPS trailer on PC and then have everyone complain when the console version comes out. Like, I don't know. Like, I, I think... It seems like think... chaotic evil, Alex. Yeah, I mean, that's just... It just... It just kind of annoys me when people think that everything can be 60 FPS on a fixed platform. That's not possible. You have limitations in hardware there. Um, yeah. Yeah.